I am focused and results oriented. Today on Prime Tech, we are having a, a conversation with one man whose focus is on achieving results. And he's going to be sharing with us the journey of how he arrived at the point that his focus is just on achieving results. He's a former vice president of the Ghana Football Association, a former management committee chairman of the Black Stars. He was part of the leadership of the Ghana Football Association that ensured the success Ghana chalked at the 2006 and 2010 World Cups. And uh, he also contested for the position of the GFA president in, in, in 2019. He's going to tell us his life journey, how he's gotten here on Prime Tech. My guest is Pet Papo. Many call him Pasi. <laughs> Thank you, Mustafa. Thank you very How much. You Thank you very much for your time. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, the last part just got me interested. Pass it. How, how did that name come to be? <laughs> oh, this name, yeah. Well, I think uh, I got it from uh, secondary school. Oh, okay. Back in my days in Presec, and uh, anytime we're having a chat amongst friends, you know, boys, we're always yes. together having chats, and then uh, I always had this knack for cracking jokes and chipping in something yes. interesting and then so if uh, if the conversation was going on i also i'm i'm, I'm also a very good listener yeah. so i'll be listening for some time that way so pap say something <laughs> pap say so it became like that was how how, how it came how about the name yeah, came. how the name came out oh, okay. oh, oh, okay. the, the short, first three letters of my surname of your surname tell us about your 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 journey where did you grow up and, uh, and all that? Okay, that's that's interesting. Well, uh, I grew up uh, principally in the twin towns of Collegono and Jamestown. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, I shared my infant days were shared equally between those two places. Oh, okay. Like, I'll typically start the morning in Jamestown, <laughs> go to Collegono for where my primary the school was. <laughs> I went to school in Collegono, oh, okay, New Era, okay. oh, okay. but then my, I was uh, living with my parents in Jamestown. Oh, okay. So I'll go to New Era in Collegono, where my, my maternal side also was. So after school, I'll go to my, my cousins and my mom and my sisters at uh, Collegono. Then in the evening, I come back to Jamestown. You grew up in two cities. So I grew up in two cities, <laughs> in equal, equal measure, you know. I was sharing the days, you know. So uh, if you ask how I grew up, okay, in those two places, of course, I went to New Era just by the Tuesday market. Yes. And then uh, from there I proceeded to Presec. Presec Legon from uh, 75 to 1982. Oh, okay. My sister, I'm, yeah. I'm not really, I, I, <laughs> let's say, we are the old, old stock. You know, so I was in Presec for about seven years. Yes. And then uh, continued to KN UST. It was then UST. Yes. For another, it was a four year course, but uh, the universities was, were closed down when we were in first year. Oh, okay. Because of some student demonstrations, so we sat home for 10 months. Wow, almost a year. Yeah, almost a year. Yeah. It was from uh, 4th May 1983 to 12 March 1984. Wow. We had problems with uh, the late flight lesson and rolling, so oh, okay. they closed the universities down. All, almost all the three universities at that time, yeah. So my four year course actually took me about five years. It wasn't that I was repeating, <laughs> no. Yeah, so I was in tech till 1987. Yeah. I completed and did my national. At that time, those times, we were doing, we were the last group to do national service national for two service. years oh. post, oh, post, okay. post, post graduation. post graduation. It was because we sat home for one year. For one year. That those, the backlog. They, ah, they so had they needed to, to clear that backlog. They had to clear, so they introduced the one year pre-university national yes, service yes, for them. Yes. And then one year after national service. But we did Two years post university, I was a, a teaching and research assistant at the planning department oh, okay. for for two years, and then while there, I joined the Ministry of Works and Housing. They had a project of something to do with UNDP habitat housing policy planning. I was there for about another seven years or so. Then moved to Danida. Jamestown is much noted to be the factory for the production of. Boxes, boxes and sportsmen generally. But, okay, the, the boxes are more. But but boxes are dominant when it comes to the conversation. Yeah, it's, it's, so how come 
you are not known much for boxing, but football instead. I'm not known much for boxing, <laughs> but, but, but I think I like boxing in equal measure as football. Oh, really? But maybe because in football, I, I got myself into some positions. Which, oh, okay. But boxing, I'm more like a... A fan sitting back. But and you've watching. invested in football more than you've done in boxing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boxing, they I've invested in boxing. The only thing I only watch and then enjoy. So maybe if I have my boxers or so, my favorite boxers, I go watch their training, follow them fight, and then uh, those kind of things. So, but in football, I've invested quite a lot of time and other resources. So, in why, it. so why, why, why football? And how did you get into football? How did I get into football? Uh, my late dad was a strong uh, Olympic supporter. Olympic fan, okay. Yeah, and uh, my uncles, I think my late dad and an auntie, they were strong Olympic supporters. My auntie actually used to, at a point in time, cook oh, okay. for the for the for team. The team. You know, so my, but then I had uncles too, were also strong phobia supporters. Oh, okay. But I'm sure because of my dad, I yeah. went straight to Olympics and became the fierce one. You, you, were, you were indoctrinated into Olympics then? Yeah, my dad, <laughs> did, my dad did that. He had a very interesting When I was growing up, I hardly watched a match in which Olympics lost. Oh, really? So I didn't know. I'm, I'm sure he was picking the matches uh, that he was sending me to, the, li the live matches. Yes. The ones they will win. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and he was, he was so good at doing that because Olympics, as I got to know, are not so predictable. Yes. Yeah, but he was good at that until I think I watched one match at Elwak against the military team and then we lost. That was the first day. But then I was fully in the Olympics. Yeah. So that was it. And then uh, up until that time I was in the uni, I was like a strong Olympics person oh, going okay. for training, crazy, skipping uh, lectures or running from hey. lectures. From tech to go and watch matches and things like that. I remember one incident when I was writing my A-levels. Yeah. On the eve of my history, European history paper. It was written on a Monday. That Sunday, we were playing House of Oak in Accra. <laughs> so my mates knew if they did not block me, I was going to. You, so you they, go just, watch. they took everything I had, my money, my key and everything, and then just told me I should go and learn. So I went to the classroom block to learn. But you, were you able to focus? Of course, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't focus then. <laughs> as I was there, I saw one junior yes. who had gone on exact, yes. coming back into school. So I called him and I said, do you have any money on you? He said, yes, okay. Give me this amount of money. I collected the money, then went to pick trot for straight from Presec to the stadium. <laughs> and then we won. Foolishly or so, <laughs> I joined the support and we were singing all the way. <laughs> Back to uh, Sla. Yes. Before I realized I had to go back to school. To school. <laughs> so I quickly went right back to school. When I got to school, the lights were off. Hey. Yeah. And I had the paper the following day. The following day. day. Yeah. So I just took my books and things together with my friends. And then we went to our seniors who were then yeah. first year at Lebo to go and learn there. Go and learn and I didn't even get it. I think I spent the whole night telling them about the <laughs> <and> <laughs> <things like> that. <laughs> They went back, but thank God I passed. <laughs> I didn't know. That's you know? So that is how you you went through the space of Great Olympics and yeah, then yeah. Also held some positions That's within the right. club. That's right. Then uh, so in the club, I was one of the few very critical supporters too. So we're always giving the management pressure. a hell of a time pressure, you know. So uh, they wrote, we had a supporters group called Concerned Olympicians oh, at that okay. time, with some very dire supporters: Aloe, Awara, the lead. Obey, Sami, and they were quite a lot. So we're always pressuring management. So at that time, we had some functions that we were, so maybe when we we're going to play matches, we we're giving players some money here oh, and okay. there. The management found a smart way of roping me on board uh, with Olympics management. So when you are there, you're part of the decision. You uh, exactly, them. exactly. <laughs> that was exactly what the, the late Setan Krao took me on board. <laughs> he was then the finance, financial controller to Mr. Depuka. Oh, Okay. That one so I got on board there as a, I think, a, a member, and that, that's, that's how it started. So I was there for some time, and then along the line, uh, we were chosen. Prof uh, Professor Joshua Labi, yes. he was then the representative of Olympics at Ogla. Oh, it was okay. uh, Gaka was yeah, then for Ogla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ghana League Yeah, Ogla. exactly. Yeah, yeah. That was when he was forming the yeah, 90s. Yeah. yeah. So we, we had two slots as a Premier League club. So Professor Labi and the management decided that I should join him. Oh, okay. to, to Ogla. So I went to Ogla and then I stayed there. Then they also gave me some positions here and then member, blah, blah, before I realized I was a vice 
president of the FAS? Vice, no, okay, I went to the FAS as a member. Oh, okay. Wanda, Dr. Nyao Tamako, oh, okay. Kofi Amwa, Kosinia Techi, Aloysius Zankebi, were five. Yes. The management board. Then it transited into the current, a bit of the current structure, yeah. where Kwesi became the president, yeah, and then I contested as a vice uh, of the FA, it was then the executive committee, yeah. So that was how I got in there, and then of course, whilst there we were getting quite a lot of different positions, management committee member here, management committee chairman here, and then, so that, that was a bit of it. Tell us some, something about your days at, at, at Great Olympics. I, I do recall that um, there were moments that Olympics will qualify for the Premier League and go back. They will yeah, qualify yeah, and go back. Yeah. You were there. That, what happened? That is called resilience. <laughs> <laughs> that is resilience. You, we only always look at the bad, the bad side of yeah, things. But, but you're, you're, you're yeah, you are because, back, because going down, getting relegated, and coming, and coming back, back required a lot. Quite a lot of teams went, and never uh, came back. got relegated, and they, they never came back. They are still struggling. Some are even in the second and then uh, lower division. Others became extinct. Yes, that was Olympics for you. I think there were too many problems in the club at the time. Too many personality problems. I always joke that. You must be, uh, I don't know the English word for it, but you must be, you must be an extremely difficult person, person to support Olympics. So the club itself is a collection of very difficult, hard-hearted <laughs> characters. So no wonder we were, we were always fighting and then we get, we get relegated, we go there, was, then we rally together and then come back immediately. So it means that this unity was not a core thing that affected it? This unity was a core thing. It was, it, it had, it, it was nothing else but this unity. That was it. No, not not. not it, and the it, club was not. always dragging the GFA to uh, the cause. Yeah, but you should you should look at those cases on their merits and uh, on any of the last one which people usually maybe this is a good opportunity to talk about. People always make reference that Olympics to the GFA to court yes. and then they were reinstated with King Faisal. No, yes. people should have praised themselves on the fact there was a case that Olympics felt the GFA. The only times the GFA had lost a case in court was when they did not use their own rules and regulations. Those were the only times the GFA lost cases Station in court. court yes. And in this particular case, Olympics felt the GFA was not applying its own rules and regulations to the letter. So we took the case to court because we had no option. The league was about to start without us. In the court, the judge realized the wisdom in what we were saying, but he didn't want to encourage litigation. So he advised the FA to go back and sit down with Olympics to settle the issue. At that time, they wanted to go to Congress. We do believe that when the judge advised that we went home to settle the case, it was around 10, 11 in the morning. By 2 o'clock, there was a Congress. You get my point? Congress had been called to do exactly what we felt we were being deprived of. So we had to take the matter back there again. So that case was still lingering and lingering. So it was a fight for a particular right. And up to now, I don't think there's any single Olympician who has any regret for doing that. We had to do that because the system was stuck against us in the most cruel and unfair manner. But the regulations of the FA require that you go to court of arbitration for sports. This particular one had to do with human rights, rights of association. So we had to do that immediately. And there was there was a time a time, a time schedule allotted to it, so we could not re sit down for our rights to have been trampled for that time because they had been doing that a number of times during that particular uh, regime under the FA. So we went to court, we have no regrets about that. And then uh, when the normalization committee came on board, yeah. they, they all had lawyers on board. Yeah. They re looked at the merits of their case and realized that if they were not able to solve that, uh, that issue in the proper manner, Olympics were likely to go back again to their place. You know, so that was why they came Were to these hints they, they, they picked up or they just felt that based on the merits of the case, there was a possibility Olympics could do that. Because if you recall, this was in 2017, if my memory serves me right. 2017. The court case was in 20, I think about 2017, 20 yes, yes, 2017. Mm -hmm. And then 2018, we still had a leak with that Great Olympics. So the normalization committee's decision to actually reinstate uh, Great Olympics, uh, just like you mentioned, many, many people actually no. feel that it was no, not the, the best. The, 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 2018 league was, was it was a novelty league or something. Or no, the 2018 league actually started and truncated in June because what? of number 12. Uh, 
exactly. Yeah. E exactly. But the case was still. Yeah, it was still a pending case. Yeah, the, yeah, it was still a pending case in court. So that issue had not been resolved then. It wasn't a matter of. So, so was it a smart, a smart thing for the normalization committee to do that? I think I think it was a smart thing for them to have done that. Both in terms of uh, common sense and the legal issues around the case, because they knew they knew fully well. It was like, uh, 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 what's her name, uh, Madam? Oh, now Dukule. Dukule was there. Yeah. They they had access to quite a number of lawyers who were advising them, and they could they could see that should Olympics pursue that case, there was no way we were going to lose. And they could also see that there was no reason why Olympics were not going to pursue that case. You know, so they looked at the facts of the case, they looked at the hints and the intelligence we were picking on the ground, and I think they took a, mat a mature decision. And, and getting into Great Olympics, that was when um, you also got into the FA uh, leadership. Uh, tell us briefly, at what point did you realize that you could go into football politics? Oh! I didn't even I didn't give it a thought. As a matter of fact, I think the football politics at the national level. I got into it. I remember it was in December, December 2000. I then lost my my, my sister, and then oh. the the Gaka was built for elections. Yeah. Gaka is already. I didn't even give it a thought that I was going to contest. So the last day of uh, filing of nominations. We were having a family meeting when I had a call from uh, a few people at Gaka. Yeah, look, that was the last day, and then there was a, a slot for a member. The mem uh, one member, and then uh, Gaka was providing one member, and then one vice, the vice uh, president or so, the vice chairman of the. Okay. Okay. So there was vacancy for that, and they wanted, quite a number of them felt they should fill uh, me, and they you wanted my. I said, oh. Really, and uh, I was then at uh, Mampovia at a family meeting or whatever it is. They found their way to get to me with their forms to fill, and then they forwarded. So you didn't it. even go to pick the form yourself. They, no, no, they I brought it for you. I to didn't even know how the form looked like. <laughs> they brought it, and because we were in the meeting, yes. I think I just signed. I didn't even know what I had signed, signed for. So they went, and then the elections took place. I won. I think I was, I was returned on the post or something. Wow. Uh, yeah, it had happened. So that was how I, so I became. A member of GAKA, Executive Council of GAKA, and then went into the FA as a result of that. So we're doing, we're there doing the FA job, and I think we we did, we did our best. You contested for the vice president of the FA. That was the 2005 elections, right? Why didn't you go for the president, but the vice president? Oh my my, uh, I went to the FA management board with Kwesi, Kwesi yeah. Nyanteji. So we're like. Very good, very good uh, oh, okay. friends and buddies, and then okay. he was a vice, okay. vice chairman, and then I was a member. Yes, you know, so it only it only stood to reason that if he was interested in going for the, the presidential president. spot, it will only be blind ambition that will make me go yeah. contest with a friend uh, just for that. Which yes. he was logically closer to that, so I settled for the vice. Tell me, and occupying that position, 2006, 2011. That was, many would say, one of the most successful periods in Ghana football. Um, I'm glad you are saying that. I, I, <laughs> I thank you, I thank you. But I think they were, they were they, it, it was actually one of the most successful periods in uh, Ghana football. We didn't have that much turbulence, of course, they were here and yeah, there. Yeah. It was, that was to be expected with every football regime. Uh, it, was, it, it, it was a nice period, a very good period. But I, I, I'll say we were a very committed team, working together, sacrificing very hard and then growing in our very best, all in the interest of the of the nation. And I, we, we, it was an enjoyable spell for us. An enjoyable spell. 2006 World Cup, uh, we qualified. That was the first ever time we, we did it. Mm -hmm. What did you do special? Especially, you were the management committee chairman. What did you do? Quite because we had had quality, quality, quality teams that had failed to qualify for the World Cup. Quality players. Quality players. Yeah, that, 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 that's the difference that we, we always forget. It's quality teams that qualify. And the team in this regard is not just the players or the technical team, but the management, the governance arrangements, and then uh, even you guys, the media and the rest. It's, it's, it's a team. We are all in it together. There's 11 players you see trotting onto the pitch are just one small part of the team. And uh, we, we did quite a lot, I'll say. First one we came in, in 2006, when we started the qualifiers in 2004. Yes. 
we, we, we told ourselves that, look, we'll give this our try and see how, how far we could go. So we started, we played our first game on the 4th of June, 2004, against Burkina Faso. Yeah. It was very difficult even getting players to go and play that match. We pitched camp. I always give credit to Dr. Kofi Amua, who was then a member of the uh, management board, where the chairman was uh, Dr. Nyaota Mako, like yeah. I told you. Kofi Amua made a very interesting suggestion that, look, we have players uh, who were playing in the Premier League, in the Serie A and the rest, who were used to camping under certain arrangements, flying or traveling under certain arrangements. Then we bring them back and then we, excuse me, say we camp them in one, two-star hotels or whatever it is. Yeah, then we suggested them to, and that, it, didn't, it didn't make much sense. And that we should try and elevate the welfare arrangements around the team. We, we bought the idea. I think they spoke to government. Government also agreed. So we decided to start camping for our first match at La Paz. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we started camp, I think uh, we may have started camp on a Saturday or so. After about, uh, the, the match was to be the next weekend, the following, the next oh, the weekend. following weekend, okay. After about three camping days, there were only two or three players in camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, the boys, the, we came to meet the old attitude. You know, so players we had invited, they will come down. I like the late Alaji Mekan, who was then the team manager, you'll be at the airport waiting for them. The player comes, joins family and friends, and then off they shoot off. So then it was, uh, I remember, Asamoah Jamba, Fodjan, and Joe Mensah, just about three of them. So they were just playing small posts in the lungs of the... Uh, before you came into the national team, they were quite an indiscipline. I don't call it indiscipline. That was what they were used to. So I, I don't want to go back to... The, the commitment was in there. Yeah. Maybe it was because of what they had also seen from, from management yeah, and yeah, from yeah. government. Yeah, you know? from previous we, leadership we, and all we, that. We, I believe, introduced a new, a new regime, a new face. But finally, well, we managed to run around uh, under very, very extremely difficult and trying circumstances to, to assemble some players to go and play Burkina Faso. We went to play Burkina Faso and we were beaten by one goal to nil. In a match, I don't really talk about officiating, but uh, I don't think we got the best of officiating in football. But we took it. So we said, like, ah, if we could, under those circumstances, assemble a team, go and play Burkina Faso, yes. get beaten by one, go to zero under those circumstances, then it means we could really do something do about it. Yeah. So we came back to Kumasi to play South Africa two weeks after that. That was a super game. And then we beat South Africa for the first time yes. in many years. Yes. Was it 3 0 or 3 1? I forgot. Was it 2 1? No, three. It was three goals. Yeah, yeah, it's either yeah, three yeah, one yeah, or three. Yeah, no. three, one. three one. Yeah. Yeah. I recall that. Yes. The boys were worse to friend us. Then we realized that Charlie, this thing is doable. Then we continued to Uganda. We drew one one with them in uh, in Kampala. Came back and then played uh was it Kevin or no no Kevin. Kevin was our last our last group game. Where we was won our last four. game in uh, in uh, in prayer. Yeah, where we but won in the four, first four in the first round. Yeah, we played Kiverd and then Congo DR. Yes, yes. You know, I mean, so I mean, yeah, I remember the Congo DR game. So we realized we, we could, we, like we were chalking good results. You know, we, we, we had beaten, uh, what do you call them? South Africa, we had managed to draw with uh, these guys. Uganda up there, we beat Kiverd over here. Then we drew with Congo DR. Yes. Yeah, that was the only match that we didn't win in the Ghana series, our home games. So we went back to Congo. The second round started with uh, an away game in Congo. That was when uh, Mr. Barreto was then our coach. Yes, yes. He left. He left because he felt he was hounded by the press. That's it. So what I'm talking <laughs> about, you see why I say teamwork involves <laughs> all of you guys. You know, so he left and then the late Samadhi was brought in as, yes. a, as a stopgap coach for just for that match. And then we drew. In between, we got uh, Ratumir Dukovic. Yes. So we went to Congo, Kinshasa to play his first match. We managed to secure a draw. I think yes. it was their first draw in over 15 years. At that point, we, we saw that it was doable. Everything was really within grasp. We continued like that and then the rest is history. And the rest is history. And uh, tell me, tell me something, something pretty quick. Within that period too, that was when um, Atheran Suisse came into the picture. Tell us, many have said that the introduction of that appearance fee is a distraction to the national team. It's, it's not a distraction. 
the bonuses were being paid bonuses were being paid way before we came on board so it only got enhanced when uh, the government of the day led by uh, the former president Kufo enhanced uh, introduced a new package there was no appearance fee at the time so with respect to the appearance fees uh, I think uh, on our way to Germany in 2006, when we were in our last stages of yeah. preparation, we went to Scotland. I think we played, uh, was it South Korea? We played yeah, one. you played South Korea, you played Turkey, Jamaica, and you played Jamaica. Jamaica yeah. Yeah. It, was, it may have been the South Korean match in Scotland. So we were in camp in Scotland when the, the leadership of the players invited us into a meeting which was very common you know we <laughs> yeah. we had that kind of relation it was a loose family environment based upon mutual respect and love for one another so we went into the meeting and then they told us that they had information that uh, ghana was due to receive some Money. appearance fee from uh, fifa for qualifying we said yeah that that was public knowledge and that they are colleagues in other teams. They are colleague players in other teams had told them that their member associations, their parent associations, had decided to give them part of their parents' fee. So they were also making a request for that kind of system to be introduced in our case. It was news to us, but of course, it was a sound and fair yeah, request. Yeah. There was nothing wrong with that. It was through their toil. They contributed to our yeah. appearance at the world Welcome. stage. And uh, if the association was getting something, or Ghana was getting something as a result of that, it was only fair and proper that they should be made to get, get some. some. Especially since their colleagues on that similar arrangements were also getting it. So we, 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 we told them we had heard their plea, but then of course we had to go back to the government to tell them about it. Because mind you, the money was not for. Yeah. For the FA, even though FIFA deals with FA. So we told the, the minister, he also conferred back and then they agreed. Then we negotiated, got, got an agreeable amount as an appearance fee for them. So that was how the appearance fee issue. There started. are people who actually say that the best way to actually deal with this appearance fee issue is where you reach to let's say you play the tournament you get to the semi-final when the tournament is done fifa senses the money you give it to the players why do you have do you have to go to the government for that money it's the same thing if we what if, 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 if the if government decides to pre-finance it government will eventually get the money from fifa you get my point yes so it's just a matter of convenience but does it mean that when but we go for our tournaments and come back FIFA gives the money to the government and not not the FA. No, FIFA gives the money to the FA. Yes. FIFA doesn't deal with government. Yes. But it's it's uh, we have a mind you, I told you, the whole relationship around the team is built on trust and respect. Yes. And recognition of rules. You know, government finances our matches. The qualifying matches yes. that we play. Yes, yes. That we play before okay. going. I get it. They I were all it. financed by government. I get it. Now, when money comes from uh, the tournament, it's only fair to go back to government that, guys, thanks a lot. This was what we got from your and our efforts. Government can choose to say, okay, take all the money. Okay, we'll take part and give you part of it. Or we are taking all the money. It's, 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 uh, there's absolutely nothing, nothing wrong with that. With now, if at any point in time, some amount of money is needed to motivate or play any role, and at that time, the government was in the position to advance that kind of money. Why not? Fine. Government can give the money. At the end of the day, the money will come back to them. I get it. Yes. So 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 that so that is very. I get it. Then then there was the 2010 World Cup. 2010 World Cup, our higher stage. Um, we never had any issue in relation to monies and and all that. How did you manage all this all these things that that happened in the 2010 World Cup? And I will let you talk briefly about the the Uruguay game. <laughs> you want to remind me? <laughs> uh, Were you able to sleep that night? <laughs> oh, I think I was able to sleep that night. Was I? I was. I think I was able to sleep that night. Uh, I'll come back to that. But uh, how were we able to? I, I did indicate that we were transparent. Yes. As an FA, we were open to the players. 
the leadership of the playing body was also a very dynamic and well-respected group. Stephen Apia, uh, John Mensah, Richido Lele Kinsin, Eric Ado, the senior boys. They were there. At that time, uh, Afamaji and the rest were there. You were young. So the small boys, yes. yes. He said he was the leader of the small boys. That's how he described the <laughs> Yeah, you know, so they were very fairly jumping, so very reasonable and uh, understanding. They trusted us because we, we, we never had, they never had any experience of deception from our side, you know. So things were quite okay. If we could not give them money at any point in time, we explained the circumstances, they will understand that we'll, we'll get it later. If they made a request which we found to be outrageous, we will tell them, oh, Charlie, by you, this thing that you are going to talk about, you must be careful. They understood. So it was quite, we were fortunate and it was quite fair that the arrangements and the modalities we put in place around the team worked very well for us. Back to the Uruguay game. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, that game. It, uh, well, of course, uh, everybody knew what happened. Uh, we, we almost scored a goal and uh, uh, the gentleman pulled it out. I don't want to mention his name. You saw this? Yeah, well, <laughs> you can mention that one. Uh, so he pulled the game out and then, uh, interestingly for me, I was sitting next to Kwesi that day. And throughout the game, the assistant referee won. Yes. I saw him to be an extremely docile person. Oh, okay. He never took any initiative. Even if the ball crossed the line next to him, he would wait for the referee to whistle. Would I he, yeah, so I was like, I was concerned. Why, why is this guy that docile? But when the, that incident occurred and the ball went, I was watching him. I saw he was moving towards the center line, yeah. that indicative of a, of a goal. Yeah. So I was telling him, that Charlie, the guy has said, the, 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 it's a goal, it's a goal, it's a goal. Then the referee just overruled him. You know, so I was like, oh, why, 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 why is this man doing that? Because to me, logically, uh, well, of course, but uh, they changed the rules after that. Yes, yes. So we, we were like martyrs. We had to sacrifice for, <laughs> for the redemption of, uh, of the game. Of future victims in yeah, the game, you yeah, know. Yeah. So we, 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 we had it and then, me from that point i saw it was going to be very difficult for us to to win that game because if you look at the trend of events before the, the ball there was a shot yes which yeah, was yeah, brought there was out so, yeah, there, was there were about two or three Stephen at, Apia, uh, uh, then there was, there was John Mesa, before Adia, uh, uh, Devin, Devin yeah, Adia. the ball will go in and come back go in and come back go in and come back eventually penalty to that one two went and came back so i knew i had, I had given up seriously speaking i wasn't expecting much from the the penalty kicks so when uh, we lost my immediate task was to console the rest of the team especially the players uh, as and the rest uh, who, were, who were literally down but the uh, the good thing was that not long after they they cheered up yeah. and uh, but i think on the on our way back to the team hotel they were quite cool we went there put up good faces sardine or whatever it is and then we all went to our rooms so smartly, the global statesman Nelson Mandela yes. rightly saw our mood and extended an invitation to us to come visit him the following day. And the South Africans were massive, you know, throughout the tournament and after, like the kind of. So we didn't really feel we had lost that much, but up to this day, and I'm sure it will remain with us forever. But that is life. <laughs> including, including myself. Yeah. You came back from that tournament, there was an election and you lost. Uh, I lost the vice presidential, the vice presidential election. Okay. Yes, yes, yeah, I lost to my good friend uh, Jordan. Jordan, may he still rest in peace. Yeah, I lost, but that was election. So I won the to get the seat onto the executive council. Yes, uh, executive committee. I won that one, and then uh, by a very huge margin. Uh, I got so if you got that huge margin, how come you lost the, the yeah, vice well, presidential? That's politics for you. Maybe <laughs> I was naive. <laughs> I was naive, and I, I suffered for that, but it was cool. Jordan won, he was also a good person and uh, so I remained on the executive committee, which was which was also good because I think the pressure of work and the load yeah. at that time for about five, uh, five, six years, you know, so if something could give me a little bit of a respite, why don't I take a back seat on that? But I was still a, a, an executive committee member. Yeah. Mm. And, and then from then, um, you, you were out of the football leadership, that's the Ghana Football Association leadership, uh, at us and being a key Key, key contributor to, 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 to the game uh, at, at the highest level. But in 2019, 
you went in too in your heart to become the GFA president. It never worked out. I had so many people saying that you could do it. In fact, Palmer has said this on record, that all the people that are at the FA, we know each other. We know who can run the Ghana Football Association. But unfortunately, delegates did not vote for you. Yeah. That's because they are delegates. <laughs> <laughs> because they are delegates. <laughs> delegates know what they vote for and who they vote for. Based on the track record that you've had at the, na yeah. at the, at the national team, at the GFA, uh -huh. don't you think that um, you, you deserve at least good votes more than you got? You got six. No, no, no. I could have even gotten less. I could have even gotten less. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, of course, I must respect the delegates. I must respect their views. I must respect their choices. But what you should understand is that you cannot force somebody to, to choose you. and prioritize his, his, his parameters. So you, maybe you may look at something more than you expect him to look at, or in a more different way. He may not necessarily look at track record. He may not, there, there are other, a, lot, a whole lot of parameters that people look out for, you know, so by and, and the crazy thing is that, I do recall having a conversation with one of the presidential candidates who actually said the, the elections were expensive. Have we politicized or, or have we monetized politics, football you politics? You mean the... The GFA elections 2019. I think, I think all elections in Ghana are monetized, sadly. I, 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 you can hardly think of any elections in Ghana which are, which are normal. I'm sure even in churches. Even in churches? I think so. <laughs> so all, all elections. They are monetized one way or materialized. Yes. You know, if, if they don't give you money, maybe there might be some material exchange or some expectation of material exchange. or financial gains after or in case your your candidate so do you think if you had money you probably could have had better not a matter of me having money it's, it's a matter of me deciding to spend my money that way so you you, ref you refuse to spend i could have had, i could have had money at that time to do that but maybe I didn't. I didn't decide. I didn't see any reason to. On do a high side, do you I'm think not, you, sh no. you should have? Because no. as, as someone, no, I have no regrets. I have no regrets that I got six votes at all. I'm a freer person now. My my, <laughs> my junior brother, a good friend, Kent, is carrying the. He's carrying the pressure. Carried, but you, carried, and you have worked with him, and you went to the African Cup of Nations 2021 as a member of the management committee of, yeah. of, of the of the Black Stars. That's and right. I think your experience with the previous national team was key in that deciding factor for you to be part. But we had our worst performance ever. What happened? In football, there are so many things that happen in football. So absolutely many things that happen. There are times when you can just be unlucky. Let's, let's, let, you see, let's face it. Let's look at the AFCON 2021 matches very well, closely. Yeah. Our first game was against... Uh, Morocco. Was it Morocco? Morocco. We lost 1-0. We lost 1-0. We we, we just, just look at the circumstances under which we considered our goal. Morocco were not really on top of us. Just cast your mind back closely. So, it was, so, so the it Afghan was, were not lucky? I, I think we were, we, were, we were generally not lucky in the Afghan. But we had a very good technical team? I, I, I didn't have a problem with the technical team. I think we were just not lucky. If you look at the Morocco game, the goal we considered. Look at the game against Gabon. The goal we considered, a throw-in that the, uh, our player had kicked the ball yes, out, yes. out of fair play, yes. expecting that the Chipuka returned, yeah. and quickly they decided to do otherwise before we realized it was a goal. What time could our boys use to respond? That was the equalizer against Comoros. That was our, our, our last key match. Within five or seven minutes, our captain and lead person had been shown the red card. So we literally had to struggle with 10 persons so in such a crucial game. Even then, we came back from uh, two goals down. Unfortunately, they scored a third goal. So there are some things that happen in football which you just have to take like that. Mind you, in 2006, AFCON, it was our worst performance before this one. Yes. What will you say to that? The interesting thing is to learn your lessons, very dispassionate lessons. You don't go looking for lessons in the in, in an emotional manner. Hmm. Yeah. That, that is the one thing you must always guard against. If you do that, you will come up with the wrong solutions for the future. The problems will escape you. I think what happened in the... It, it was a blessing in disguise in Cameroon. And uh, maybe a lot of lessons have been learned. Did you just describe a blessing in disguise? How? It was. There were in interesting lessons that 
we learned from there, which I believe are being corrected. Look at the size of the tanker team now. There are uh, some, some, I think there are some personnel on board who yeah. were not there yeah. before. A whole lot of other different arrangements have been made. Lessons that were learned in, uh, in Cameroon, which are being used to develop the team. Pretty quick, then we just sign, we just, we just sign out the conversation. And I think I need to focus on this. Um, bring him back, Milo. You agree that we should have come back? Yes. I agree, then uh, I, I, I don't have any regrets. That, that's my position. That is my position. Because at the time, yes. at the time, uh, I think we had the pressure of time. We didn't have much time. Yes. yes. One. And then uh, of those who were available or who we could, the asking price was way beyond our reasonable pockets as a nation. Milo had come to Ghana. He performed very well in his first, uh, his first outing. The circumstances under which he went away were, were circumstances that you could not entirely blame him if you knew. Yeah. You know, so bringing back Milo, I don't think was a bad thing. Who is the best coach you've ever worked with at the national team? At the national team? Wow, that's... Uh, I think it will be between Milo and uh, Ratomir Djokovic. Which one? Milo? Rakovic? Uh, uh, Ratomir? Djokovic? I'll, 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 I'll say Milo will be slightly ahead of Ratomir Djokovic. The best captain you've worked with? Oh, Steven Apia. I think he was the only captain I worked with. Yes. Yeah, Steven Apia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the only captain yeah, you, the only you captain worked with. Yes, that, that's, that's, that's quite an interesting one. Yes. As a policy analyst, next year there will be GFA elections. Would you consider to go no. and develop policies for the GFA? No. You mean to go and contest or develop policies? No, go and, no contest for FA leadership again. No, no, I wouldn't. I don't, I don't have the energy. You've given up. I've not given up, but I don't have the energy. You know, it's just, just one basic thing. Yes. You, you, you know you have to tour the regions of yeah, Ghana. Yes. That in itself is physically exerting. I don't think I've I'm not, I'm financially not, draining. Oh, the, the financial, interestingly, 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 there were, were, so, were so many people who came up with all manner of gifts and support for my campaign. So the financing wasn't a problem. Okay, going into the, this year's World Cup, what would make Ghana a success? What would make Ghana a success? Yes. Many things. One. We must be sincere to ourselves. One is we must give the tanker team and the playing body the required peace of mind to go there and perform. That is very is absolutely important. Absolutely critical. We will be going with 26 players. Right? Yes. There are about 100 eligible players who should go in the eyes of everyone. If you were asked to name 26, I will. You are 26, you will definitely name your 26. Each and every person. <laughs> One of and, no, yeah. and none of us who would have ours coincided. Yeah. You get my point? So we must recognize that it's because of that diversity that we need to assign a single person the responsibility to pick a certain 26 that we all accept. That is number one. This business of this one is not right for the blaster. This one is right for the blaster. Fine, we can comment, we can criticize and things like that. But our, 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 our criticisms must be informed by our readiness and willingness to contribute towards the success of the team. That is very crucial, one. Two, of course, I think they've lined up, they've started their training programs already. Yeah. We are left with the last match to play against uh, Switzerland. I would want to believe, I don't know, I've not found out yet that the camping location and the camping program will be ideal and conducive for the team. I also want to believe that uh, issues surrounding the finances of the team, the package, the welfare package, will be Handled finalized well. way before, before time in an agreeable manner. Then of course, uh, we pray for Mother Lord and God to, to smile on us. We'll play Uruguay again. What, ad what advice will you offer? We we'll play, we'll play with them as a team. As any other team. Should we go for a revenge? It, it, it doesn't matter whether you are going for a revenge or you are not going for a revenge. Your objective when you set up there is to play and win. So if the win becomes a revenge, fine. If it's just a normal getting three points to progress in the group, fine. So I, it, it, I think it's a moot question whether it should be a revenge or not. Whether yeah. we like it or not, we have we to play have, Uruguay yeah. and we would have to beat them. Whether I, when we beat them, some will take it as a revenge. 
some will take it as three points in the kitty or whatever it is for us but uh, that is it and uh, i'm sure i'm sure the team we, we make we may come up with a team that will be capable of doing that and we are finding out this conversation but it will be a travesty for me to not to ask this question because i remember when you when you were going around preaching your message for the gfa presidency um if you were made the gfa president what is that one thing you would do if i was you mean in 2019? Not even 2019, even today. If you were the GFA president, what is that thing, one thing that you would have done? Quite a difficult question. It's not a difficult. There are many things. It's difficult because you say one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't see which uh, quite a, one will tackle uh, juvenile football seriously. Two uh, will resolve issues relating to Senegal development, coaching, coaching courses and the rest, three officiating and hooliganism. And now, more than ever, the issue of betting. Which is a big canker. It's, it's a big canker. It's a big canker. And uh, it has, it has the, the likely but effect the of the... But the is engaging betting companies. The, yeah, but there's nothing wrong with engaging betting companies. Other, 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 other companies, other uh, countries or associations, have relationship with betting companies. The thing is the ethics of it. The actors, there are actors who should have nothing to do with betting. And that I know the FA has been preaching. Maybe they have to preach that forcefully enough and then put in place measures to ensure that there are appropriate sanctions for people who fall foul of the law. So for example, like club executives, uh, coaches, players and the rest. So, so you, you, you agree with the decision to demote Entalais and Ashantigo? I agree with, it, with whatever disciplinary measures are imposed on any person found guilty of engaging in that. That, that. that much I agree. I agree totally. I don't have any objection to that at all. Fred Papo, former Vice President of the Ghana Football Association, a former Management Committee Chairman of the Black Stars, a policy analyst. <laughs> <laughs> this is Prime Take with me, Muftar Nabila Ablai, and my guest was Fred Papo. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.